Sometimes plans fail for a better future. My name is Lorna Grayling and welcome to our fourth season of Woman Power. In studio today is my beautiful friend Jane Blackbird. She and her husband Warren is the lead pastors at Church Experience in West Chase and they know all too well about the pain of failed plans. Jen, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. It's such an honor to have you here. Oh, thank you, my friend. This is this is a privilege for me um, to be to be on your show. But it's a privilege to know you and to be friends with you. And I'm just so thankful for for the way we connected and the way we met. And that um, just so thankful for this connection. So thank you for having me. This is exciting. Absolutely. And this is exactly how we met and how this started is, you know, of that first encounter and me meeting you and Warren literally directly after you guys came over to America and gave up everything you had in South Africa. And um, I mean, I was amazed that you guys were standing so strong. <laughs> But tell us about that experience. Yeah, fake it till you make it, girl. We were, we were crumbling inside, but trying to be brave on the outside. You did a great job, I have to tell you. So that's one good key there, right? Fake it until you make it. Um, but tell us, I mean, the day we met, you guys literally had your whole plan, your dream, your vision, everything that you had been praying for for 15 years. You thought it had come to pass. And as you arrived in America, it, it, it there was it crumbled. In Nothing was there. Eyes. Tell us about that experience. Uh, well, yeah, the weekend we met you was Easter weekend last year, mm -hmm. and um, and that was a God ordained uh, a God ordained meeting. But we had no idea what lay in store for us. Um, you know, I'll take it one step back. Fifteen years ago, my husband and I got married, um, and uh, funny little story. We said um, we said at our vows. Uh, on our on our on our wedding day, which I thought was which I thought sounded all romantic and you know full of love at the time, we used the words from Ruth, which said, "Where you go, I will go, and your people will be my people." And uh, little did I know what lay ahead. <laughs> uh, for f sixteen years later, um, Warren had a, a had a I, I had a love to go into corporate and to take on the business world after studying at university. And he just wanted to. Uh, we, we both studied commerce, and uh, he had this desire and this call in his heart to go into ministry and and shortly after we got married he said to me um i am um, I, I i i need to tell you something i i want to go into ministry and i, I want to be a pastor and i looked at him <laughs> and i said to him i don't want to be poor <laughs> that was my answer that was my response we just newlyweds and uh I was like, no, 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 no. So that was that was fifteen years ago, um, and uh, and so for fifteen years he wrestled and he prayed and he just dreamt about a call into ministry. And he felt and he he felt he felt you know he felt a call to to church plant and and of course needless to say I did not. Um, and we were very actively involved in our church and I you know and we loved our church and we loved our community. Um, but I, I certainly didn't feel a call to be a full time you know to be in full time ministry. I love business and corporate and. And, you know, study commerce and I wanted to, you know, climb the ladder and, and he had this <laughs> desire to be a pastor and I was like, how's this going to work out? Wow. Anyway, for 15 years, we pursued our, we, we, we were very involved in our local church, um, at Four Ways Community Church in Johannesburg, loved our church, loved our community there. Um, and we were, and Warren was just fortunate enough to have um, our pastor and his wife take us under our wing and, and gave Warren just opportunity to, to preach and to lead and to, for us to lead home group for 15 years and, and just to be involved in all the leadership aspects of church. And so we got to see and we got to learn really like on the job and, and hands on. Um, so all that time, God was like leading us and, 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 uh, and, 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 you know, really grooming us and preparing our heart. And we had to go through quite a bit of tough season for that too. Anyway, for Warren, he says it was a 15 year journey to get to that point mm. um 
and to really, really pray. And it took ages to get there, but God had to work, you know, in us before he could work through us. Anyway, wow. fast forward. All, all, all I love that. Later, I want to pause you there because that was so profound. That one thing that you were saying now is that God had to work in you first to enable to work through you. And I love that because that is a powerful thing that we sometimes forget, right? That we want to serve God. We want to work for God. We want to do things for God. Um, but we don't really like it when God works in us because that's really painful. <laughs> That's not so nice. It's the process. It's the process, you know, from it's like when you when you first get that dream and you get this vision and Warren is saying, but this is a good dream. This is a good vision. Mm -hmm. Why is it taking so long to pan out? Like what is going on? And all the time there was stuff that we had to work out in us and in our marriage and in our just in our just in our spiritual life. And God had to, you know, it's that se it's that season of being rooted under the ground mm -hmm. where you where you grow in the dark, where nobody sees it, and, and you've got these dreams and aspirations, but and, and, and what he's doing is he's putting down deep roots for, for the fruit that will come later. But at the time, it doesn't feel, it doesn't, you know, it, it's dark and it, and it, and it, and it feels, you, you can't really see and you don't know when and how long you're going to be in the dark for. And so it was tough. We went through some tough sort of seasons of working this whole thing out and Warren being very frustrated. And, and, and in the meantime, I'm loving corporate and I'm just going on and, and lo loving, you know, working and, and doing my thing. And this is great. I'm feeling fulfilled and, and I'm just, you know, chasing, chasing, chasing that. And, uh, and, and he's going, Oh, there's something more. There's so mm -hmm. much more. There's so much more, you know? And, um, anyway, so that was a bit of a journey, but you, like you say, God had to work in mm -hmm. us before he could work, you know, through us. And, and so that was a journey. So um, Jane, and you guys and arrived in America, right? You left everything you loved behind in South Africa, especially you. I mean, for Warren, this was more of his dream and his passion coming true. But for you personally, everything you knew, your family, your, your life, your job, your career, your identity Absolutely. was left behind and you guys came over to America. You were obedient. You were following your husband's calling and um, arriving here, nothing was as it seemed. You guys were going to walk into this whole new church and ministry and at that moment there was nothing. Absolutely. How did that feel, um, especially for you? Because literally that was the one thing that you said that you never wanted is you don't want to be poor. <laughs> and here is this whole opportunity <laughs> that you thought was going to create an income. You're unable to work. You don't have the visas. And, you know, it was just nothing. There was nothing there. The church that you thought that you were going to yeah, take over wasn't there. Yeah. How did you yeah, feel? It, it, it was tough. It was a tough journey. I mean, co coming to America was not my dream. Like you said, it was Warren's dream. Um, and I, I didn't want to leave my, my country. I didn't want to leave my people, my, my, my home, my, my friends, my family, my, my church, everything. I, that was, it was really, really tough for me to leave. Um, I, I struggled with that. Um, the opportunity opened for us in, uh, in, in Florida, in Tampa with church experience. Um, and this, this fantastic opportunity opened and, and I wrestled and struggled with it, and 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 it was and it was tough. But I I, I just knew that if I, I I didn't want to, I came kicking and screaming. I always say I came kicking and screaming. Wanted to drag me along this along on this dream, you know. And uh, and and so I came quite. I came quite resentfully, to be honest. Mm. Uh, it was hard for me to give up my identity, give up my job. And, and like you say, the tough thing was we were coming to a fantastic opportunity here to church plant. Um, um, but what was taken out of my hands was my ability to earn and to be independent and to have my own, you know, my own career and my own dream. Um, because we arrived here on a religious visa, which means we, uh, we, we could only, you know, we, we, we couldn't have alternate income. There was no plan B. There was, it was, it, we had to fundraise to get, you know, to get this church off the ground. Um, and it, you know, that, and, and, and that was tough. That was tough for mm -hmm. me because I had to go from relying on myself to relying on God for dependence. And, and that was my weakest, my weakest area, um, of, 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 of my faith, um, was trusting in God for, for his provision. And that's the area that, that that's the area that I landed the deep, <laughs> deepest into, right? He, he knew that was my area of weak point and he put me in. That's where he put me into an area where my hands were tied. Legally, I was not allowed to work, and I just had to. We just had to. We just had to arrive here and trust in God for His provision. And it was terrifying. Mm. It was terrifying. I felt like He'd stripped me bare of my identity. Of I arrived here feeling anonymous and resentful towards my husband. Resentful for just. I, I, I was. Uh, I, I was a bit of a misery for the first couple of months I arrived here. I was in absolute misery. Um, I, I, it was. It was tough. I. 
I, 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 and how did yeah. that change for you? How did you get to that place of being so... Because, I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, this is a excruciating place that you're describing now. I mean, looking back at it, it's, it's a lot easier to talk about it now. But when you're in that place of absolute... It's excruciating pain and it was, it, my fear. Heart, my heart felt so in my chest. I was mm. grieving, grieving mm. for my country, grieving for my life, grieving for my identity. And mm. I was, it was, it was, it was heart wrenching. Mm. I, it was, we didn't know, we didn't, I, I, I couldn't see how we would survive. I didn't know financially how we would make it. I felt like it had been financially reckless that we'd worked to get to ourselves to a point of so-called comfort and security and stability in South Africa. And we gave it all up at our age to come here and to start over. And I just said to Warren, this is financial suicide. Who does this? This is reckless to arrive here in a country where we're not allowed to work. Um, we need to fundraise just to survive. And, um, I, I just, you know, we, we, we arrived with no credit score, with all our life savings um, divided by 20 because of the South African Rand, 20 to 1 US dollar. Mm. And I was like, this is mad. Who does this? I, I felt like I was living in, I, like, who does this? Mm. Who does this? It's it, a living and, and it was nightmare. Me. I was living this reality. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it. And nobody had forced us to leave, you know. Um, nobody had, you know, we, we, we came here willingly, gladly. And I'm thinking, what have we done? Why did I agree to this? And and so my, ma you know, I, I struggled. I, I I resented, like you said, I, I had a lot of resentment towards Warren for the first, for the first, for the first year. I, I felt, I just felt resentful. I'm like, how mm. could you do this to our family? How will we ever recover? Um, and um, yeah, anyway, I. I, I and how did that change heal. for you? I, like, how? So, where was the switch for you to get to that absolute agony and resentment? To because it was like all of a sudden, yeah, your was, whole was, mind was. shifted. I, and things just started going right, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I, so what happened was I, what I had to learn in the process, and this was a difficult thing for me, who's a bit of a control freak, and I like to have a plan, and I like to have a, you know, a mapped out path. And this was mm. no plan. There was no plan. Mm. There was no plan. And and I, and that was tough for me. That was really mm. difficult for me. Um, and I just had to learn. What I had to learn in that moment was to yield to, to and to say to God, okay, your will be done, not my will. Mm. Like this is. This, this is terrible. This is awful. This is going to end badly. I don't know how we're ever going to survive. We had no plan B. We couldn't go back to South Africa. We were trying to make things, you know, trying to make it work here, starting a church from scratch, knew, you know, effectively knew nobody, knew nothing except, you know, and, and, and just trying to get something off the ground from nothing mm -hmm. in a foreign land, um, except for my husband's sheer determination that God would make a way and that he would, that he would provide. And, 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 but God, I mean, he believed and he trusted, he had, he was, he had such clarity and such determination this was going to work. And I, I had none of that. None of mm. that. I was, I was a wreck. He, I, he, saw... I, was, I was homesick. I was miserable. Um, yeah. And so it was my 40th birthday in September and he sent me back to South Africa and everybody thought, this is not a good idea. She's still crying and homesick and, and this is not going to work out well, you know. And uh, I went back to, and, and saw, saw, you know, I went back to, to South Africa and, and that was comforting for me. Um, and and I, I, I don't know, what it did was it just gave me fresh perspective. I, I think I got closure on that chapter that God had, in, you know, that season had closed and I was now moving into a new season. And I came back with fresh eyes to see, oh my gosh, we have an incredible opportunity here. Mm -hmm. An incredible, incredible opportunity. It's very difficult for South Africans to get into the United States from a visa perspective. And we have an amazing opportunity. And oh my gosh, I'm so thankful for this opportunity. And something just shifted and something shifted in my heart. And I suddenly, I suddenly... It, 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 I had to realize, I got convicted that I needed to change my victim mentality. I had such a victim mentality. Woe's me. We've come here. We're African missionaries in America. Who does that? Um, and, uh, you know, and oh, we're, you know, we can't, you know, I, have, I had such a victim mentality and I was convicted of that and I had to change my mindset mm. and just be super grateful and thankful for this incredible opportunity to be here and realize that it's a privilege that very few get. And I suddenly looked around and I was like, oh my gosh. It's it's incredible. It's amazing. It's beautiful. And, and and I just had this radical shift in my heart. Uh, one of being thankful and one of being grateful. And I suddenly everything everything changed. And mm. and, and and I just my heart and my head changed. And and it's suddenly the blessings like you, just started to flow. Right. And it's almost like you once you stopped looking back at yes, what you had yes. lost and yes. started to look ahead at yes. what you can gain. Yes. 
um, is like a big thing that happens. And that is a powerful thing because in terms of victim and, and you know, when we get to that stage where we're just, it's just so painful. Um, I mean, it's very hard to make that mind shift, but you know, the fact that God was able to show you that, I mean, that is so profound. And- and I suddenly realized we'd had miracle after miracle after miracle. I, had, I, I used to feel like we were the, you know, the Israelite, you know, standing at the Red Sea. And I'm thinking, I don't know how we're going to move forward. We can't go back. You know, I, I, and there was my poor husband as Moses standing at the Red Sea, like trying to part the waters. And, I, and I'm like moaning, <laughs> dragging my heels, you know, Israelites. And, and, um, and, and so many miracles, miracle after miracle after miracle of this incredible provision, the very area that I lacked the most, that I lacked faith in the most where was the area that God was coming through and and as a family we would pray for things and and he would answer our prayers in the most miraculous miraculous way in terms of provisions um and just just with for the most basic everyday needs yeah. he would supply our needs daily like that story of daily manna from heaven I would say mm-hmm. I pray in the morning Lord we need this I don't know I don't know where it's going to come from I don't know how it's going to happen and literally that day there would be this miracle connection and, and this person would phone and we would get this and think would just fall into place and I would be like oh my gosh and it surprised me Um, and it was these miracle little provisions and the more I thank God the more I recognize it the more I'm like oh my gosh it's miracle after miracle Mm -hmm. on this Red Sea road that we're walking did I realize and the more the miracles came and the more the provision came and suddenly I got to this point where I'm I'm like, I'm overwhelmed by your goodness. And I've gone from this victim mentality of feeling, you know, just just stripped bare and with nothing and fully dependent on God, thinking, oh my gosh, we are overflowing with miracles, overflowing with goodness and God's God's goodness. You know, they say that God, uh, um, we, we, Robin Woods taught us the saying that God honors the risks that we mm-hmm. take for him. And we took a giant risk. Like it was, it was risky doing what we did. It, mm-hmm. it, it's still risky. Like it, it was a giant risk. It was a financial risk. It was everything about it was risky. Yeah. But God honors those risks we take for him. And I, we're living proof of that. We really are. He, he has just poured out his favor and his abundance and his blessing on us in terms of his provision. And But I had to walk that journey. I had to walk that road of, of trusting him mm-hmm. uh, when it felt dark and when it felt you know mm. when it just when, when I, I didn't know how things were going to come together and I had to trust him for that you know mm. and I think just the growth that you've had from that is exactly what you needed for the ministry that you're in now because when you're in ministry I mean let's um, be yeah. honest you're the, the the pillars you're the people that that others look up to that others need to draw strength from and just yeah. that power that you've learned now and the provision that you've seen from God is wonderful so I would the, have never learned that staying in the comforts of, of, of Egypt you know I would have yeah. never stayed that honestly it, it, it's it's I, I sort of say this I feel like church planting and immigration was harder than I could have ever imagined it would be mm-hmm. harder like if you told me it was going to be this hard it was 10 times harder 10 times harder like more heart-wrenching more difficult harder than I could ever imagined it could be but it's better it's better than I could have ever imagined it could be as well it's now better it's better like just the the, what we what the privilege there's there's a there's a real price there's a real price to church planting and to doing ministry and 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 but there's such a privilege to it there's such a privilege it's it's a bit of a double-edged sword you know and um and if you can choose it comes at a cost but but it's it's incredible if you can choose it all over again, would you do this again? Oh my gosh, that's a good question because <laughs> if you'd asked me this time last year, I would have said, no, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Like, re- rewind. And, um, and now it's, it's a, it's a, I, I feel like we're living in a freedom that I could not have comprehended mm-hmm. um, when uh, b- before. I, I, I cannot comprehend. And I think it's just, it, it's, it really, it, we do feel like we're now living in our, our promised land because mm-hmm. it, it, it's just a freedom that comes from fulfill, finding your purpose. Mm-hmm. When you find your purpose that God has ordained, Warren, Warren, you know, Warren says we're, we're 19 weeks into our church plant. We, we we launched on Easter, miraculous, you know, miraculous start, small beginnings, humble beginnings. Last year, we just we started in our home. We just started meeting with a couple of people in our home, and it grew and and and, and it just grew and grew. And God, God built His church. That that they, they He says, you know, He says that He'll build His church. And I didn't know where the people would come from. Um, I, I didn't know how, um, but He. He says that the people build his church, and he does. He does. He add. He adds, um, and so he's added the people miraculously. I mean, miraculously now you guys have a full a church. Venue. Like you and have a full venue. You have a beautiful church. You have. I mean, this is just. It, it's. 
it's mind blowing to see where you were last year and where uh -huh. you are today. It, it, it's a, for, for me from the outside, it's a profound miracle and it builds my faith because I'm like, well, if God can do that for her, I mean, she can do that, you know, he can do that for me. So I think it's so just such an incredible thing, not only for you guys to see, but for the rest of us to witness from the outside as well. Thank you. Yeah, we have a venue now miraculously. We've got a venue we launched on Easter this week. We're 20 weeks in. God keeps sending the people. And, and now we, we have a we have a we have a church we have a fully, fully fledged church that, that it's miraculous it came I don't know I don't know how it happened but it <laughs> and it's and it's, and it's despite us it's despite me wow. and all my doubts and all my faith uh, lack of faith uh, it's despite that God mm. God used us um, he was was you know he 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 just he just needs your yes he just needs your yes mm -hmm. to say lord here i am like i, I don't know how this is going to work out and i so badly needed a plan and there, there was no plan i mm -hmm. just had to trust him blindly and and warren did and and and, and here we are 20 mm -hmm. weeks later living out you know living out this dream that warren dreamed about for 15 years in the making and he says warren says like there's nothing else he'd rather be doing nothing mm -hmm. else in this world like can, can satisfy the way this can when you find your purpose mm -hmm. in terms of what god is destined for you to do you know amen jane while you were going through that absolute agony and that desert and that time of of excruciating mm -hmm. Fear, right? Because I mean, let's just explain it like it is. There's no sugarcoating that that emotional place. It's it's actually very traumatic. Um, I saw a lot of your posts on Facebook where you were literally just sitting in nature with a river in front of you. There's this beautiful tree, um, and then you just made these beautiful posts of just um, being in the presence of God, and it almost looked like you were just you know. Were there days where you obviously felt like you didn't know how you were going to get through this day? How do you get up? How are you going to just be a mom and, and just breathe, right? Is, um, so what did you do during those days? Is that when you went into nature and just drew from God's strength? Um, tell yeah. me a little bit more about those moments. Yeah, we, we, we had a we had a beautiful little lake in our um in our in our in our town home community and I the sunsets are beautiful here, absolutely beautiful. And that would be my little refuge. I just go and sit at that lake and um you know I learned uh, Banning Leapsha is a is a is, is said he, he taught he taught us this thing that says your job is is to love God um, and to sit in his presence and to seek intimacy intimacy with you. You do your job. His job is to work everything out. Wow. And I was sitting in front of this big task, you know, and, 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 and Benny says, God's, God's really good at doing his job. So you get good at doing your job because he's good at doing his job. And I was like, okay, that's simple, but I can do that. I, if I just sit at your feet and sit in your presence and, and just seek you, I don't know how this is all going to work out. Like it feels overwhelming. It feels impossible. It felt impossible, but they say God uses the impossible, you know, he, he uses the unlikely to achieve the impossible. And it, we felt unlikely and this felt impossible, this task, you know, and I used to sit feeling overwhelmed, thinking how, how are we going to make it? How is this going to pan out? And, 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 and I just had to, I guess God used that to draw me into his presence, to sit at his feet and say, I don't know how this is going to work it out. And he would say, it's not your job to work it out. My job is to work it out. My job, I'm going to work all things together for good. You just need to seek me and to trust me and to love me through it. And that was a journey for me to learn that, um, you know, that you know they they say that 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 logic screams no and faith whispers yes oh wow that was me sitting sitting at that lake going no logic is no like what is this what are we doing here like how is this and faith is the small, small little whisper of yes whisper. you'll work he'll work it out and 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 he does and he did and we're living proof of that and and now we have this beautiful authentic community uh, that we're, that God is building, you know, with our church here. And, and it's, and it's a beautiful thing to see. And, you know, I, I, this wasn't my dream. Like it wasn't, it this wasn't something that I wanted. I didn't know I wanted this. I didn't know that wow. this would fulfill me in the way that it has, you know? Um, and um, I, I wanted something else. And, 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 and what I had to realize is that doesn't satisfy. That was yeah. never going to satisfy, you know, this satisfies in a way that I, I, I couldn't imagine it would, or it could. It's just amazing, right? That we don't even know what's good for us. Us, but God does. It, it's so profound because when I, I mean, I sit in the mornings with my kids and, uh, you know, before they run off to school and take the beautiful yellow bus, which I absolutely love in America. <laughs> 
in South Africa, I used to drive myself to pieces after all the kids here. They just bounce on the bus and come back home, which is phenomenal. But um, so before they bounce on the bus, we, you know, we talk a little bit and, and, and just connect uh, just a little bit of moments where I can impart some things still because they're teenagers. They're all big now, so they don't always want to listen to you. But this morning, we really had this blessed moment. And I told them a little bit about your story and I was bouncing some ideas off them just trying to find out, you know, what is it that, that, that God wants to say. And my daughter, my 17-year-old daughter said, Mom, and that's what we opened with, is sometimes plans fail for a better future. And I thought, what? This is such a word from God coming from a 17-year-old, uh, you know, teenager. <laughs> My plans would have been, uh, 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 you know, um, my, my, my brother gave me a little fridge magnet once that said, I'm not bossy, I just have better ideas. <laughs> and I, I, I need to tell the Lord, like, I got, I got an idea, like, I got a good idea, and this is the plan, and this is the way we should go. I always thought I had a better idea, mm. you know, and, and this was not my plan. This and not literally, my plan. Not all your plans failed, right? I mean, because you came to America, the plan that you had made from South Africa failed. That was non-existent, and that was yeah. a big shock. And then every other plan that you made literally failed um, until you kind of could surrender and, I had to yield and let to go. His plan. Wow. And I had to yield to his plan, and that was tough, difficult for me as a little, as a control freak, a type of personality. I wanted to control it. I wanted to have a plan, and and, and this was not my plan. This was I had to yield and I had to say okay your will not mine I had to die to myself and just be like okay and that was tough that was tough but what I realized is his plans he, he, he does exceedingly abundantly more than we could hope or imagine if we yield and if we trust to him um and if we just surrender like mm -hmm. this was this was really a, a this was a journey of surrender for me I just surrender my plans, surrender my dreams, which I thought were, were great dreams, and I just surrender it all. Um, and, and, and he really does, he does like turn, you know, they take beauty from ashes and, and turn your, your mourning into dancing. He really has done that for me personally. There was, you know, that grieving, that heartache, that physically, my heart physically sore in my chest, uh, grieving my life and my family and everything I've left behind. Um, I, He's he's turned that into joy. Like I, there's, I, I can't I can't describe it to you. Like he, but I had to walk through that wilderness. I had to walk through that tough pain to come to this point. Um, and and it's not my doing, and it's not me at all. And honestly, it's his plan. And this was not my plan. This was not my plan. But I'm so grateful. And now after six, after the first six months of resenting my husband, I can look at him now and I can say to him, thank you for this life that you've given us. Like thank you for this life that you've given us because this was not my plan, and I always thought I had a better plan, and this was your. Oh, you know, this was he, and he was determined. He, he he had such courage. He had such courage, like to go against what was what was what was deemed. You know, to, to, to come up with this plan, which I said was reckless. Everybody thought he was crazy. Like, are you? How is this going to pan out? No, it's foolishness. It's reckless. I, I don't think this is a good idea. And um, but God, but God, he he was he had such courage. He had such determination. And he, um, you know, we, we're just so thankful. We're so thankful for for the opportunity that we have to be here. Um, um, planting this church and and um, yeah, we're just, we're just so thankful. So incredible. well, you guys are gonna be amazing. I can tell because your passion and Warren's determination and obedience. I mean, that's a lethal combination. But in a nutshell, just closing off um, our our program today because we're completely out of time. Some advice for, you know, women out there today that is at that place where you were literally, you know, in the first six months, that pain of place of agony and pain and, and, and fear and, and just, you know, so traumatized with circumstances. What would be your advice, you know, getting through that place? You know what I've learned to do? When plans don't work out and when things don't go according to plan, I've just learned to ask God to redeem and reconcile things in a way that you can't. Like, I, 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 that, that's, all, that's, that's my best advice is to say, Lord, you redeem this and you reconcile it. And when you do that and you surrender and you hand it over and you say, Lord, I don't know how this is going to work out. I, I don't know. I trust you, I, but I don't know. I, I can't mm -hmm. figure it out. And, and he can redeem and restore and reconcile things in a way that you could never because he works all things together for good and um, when you hand that over and surrender that and just just keep praying just keep trusting and saying God this is a mess it's an absolute mess and I can't see my way through but but I, I know that you do and you have a purpose and a plan and would you redeem this and would you reconcile and restore restore the situation and 
watch how he does it. Like, watch how he does it. Uh, we're living proof of that. And, um, and, and, it's, and it's far better. It's exceeded. It's better than I could have ever imagined it could be. And, and that's what he does. That's what he says he'll do. And, and, and if he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you, you know? Thank you so much, Jane. That is so powerful. Thank you for joining us today. It's been an absolute joy having you here. Thank you so much. It was wonderful to be with you. And uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. I appreciate it. And that's it from me, Lorna Grayling and Woman Power TV. Please do like and subscribe to our show and share it with someone that you think might benefit from this. If you're in the West Chase area, do go and visit Jen and Warren at Church Experience. Their details will be on the screen. And uh, remember, sometimes plans fail for a better future. Until next week, bye-bye.